on the January 2024 What's Neat. I've got Daryl Cruz, who has modeled the Union Pacific Evanston Sub Railroad. We met him up in Chicago, and his layout is an absolute treat. The What's Neat Show is sponsored by Lombard Hobbies, your value hobby shop for over 40 years of modelers helping modelers. Big inventory, value pricing, fast shipping, and great service. And by Broadway Limited Imports, the cutting edge leader in model trains. Check out their website at broadway-limited.com. And by Bachman Trains. Now that's the way to run a railroad. Check out their website at bachmantrains.com. And thank you for helping us support the best hobby in the world. This is What's Neat for January 2024. I'm your host, Ken Patterson, and this month we really do have a great show. In that first, Campbell Rice stops by and shares with us some tricks and some connectors he's discovered to make layout wiring that much easier without any soldering. Also this month, Larry Harrington from Bachman Industries stops by and shares with us a lot of the new products being released this January that you're sure to see in Springfield at a great show up there in Massachusetts coming up shortly. Also this month, I've got Daryl Cruz who has modeled the Union Pacific Evanston Sub Railroad. We met him up in Chicago and his layout is an absolute treat in HO scale I mean to tell you, when you stand on his layout and look at the scenery, you feel like you're out west. So good job, Daryl, you really pulled that one off. Also this month, Broadway Limited has sent a lot of wonderful N-scale models for us, for eye candy, starting with two SD40-2 locomotives. One of them is in Bicentennial, and the other one is in this special Wisconsin paint scheme that we are all so used to seeing this beautiful model. They've replicated it quite well. These models come with Paragon 4 sound in them, so they also sound fantastic as we run them on the N-Scale layout over there uh, last week. And I mean to tell you, they're a treat. Also this month, they've sent two tank cars for us to look at. I shot these out in outdoor sunlight. These are cryogenic tank cars. And there's two variations, one of each that I'm showing you right now. They're absolutely beautiful. And also, they sent some stock cars, and this is fun. Stock cars with sound in them. The first one has cattle sound. The next one has got mule and donkey type sound. And the third one was a special release that they had made for Halloween, where it's got spooky sounds in it, which is kind of a treat for those that want animation on their layout just like that. Also, they mentioned to me that the Pacifics that we shared on last month's show are now in stock in hobby shops. So be sure to get yours. These are an N scale Paragon 4 sound. They sound absolutely fantastic and they look just as great as they sound. So be sure to check out the What's <laughs> Neat This Week video podcast that we shoot down here every Saturday night, keeping you updated on what's new in the hobby with special guests, our regular podcast crew, and just a lot of fun camaraderie and conversation. After all, this is the best hobby in the world, and we love presenting it for you. So with that, let's continue on with this January 2024, What's Neat? <laughs> For this segment of What's Neat, I'm standing with Daryl Cruz among this beautiful home layout that he calls the Union Pacific Evanston Sub. That's correct. And it looks like, Daryl, you definitely have a passion for this hobby yes. in that you like to model prototype uh, locations 
and you're also into operation. So let's start with the passion part. Okay. Why did you build this beautiful art? Well, I uh, actually spent 50 years uh, modeling in N-Scale and doing a Midwestern scenery. I did the Geneva sub uh, from uh, Proviso, Illinois to uh, uh, Clinton, Iowa. And uh, you know, did a pretty extensive layout there, but then uh, did that for like 50 years. And then we moved here to be closer to our grandchildren. Nice. And I had a layout that was uh, already moved once. I didn't think I could move it again. So I decided that I was gonna do something brand new. And when I did something brand new, it was all brand new, a new scale. Uh, instead of uh, uh, Midwestern, it was mountain scenery. I stayed with the Union Pacific, uh, but uh, definitely wanted to do something completely different. So I sold all of my end scale stuff, 50 years worth of collecting, sold every single bit of it, and used that uh, money to, to build uh, this uh, layout here of the Evanston sub in HO scale, which I'm really enjoying. You've taken a lifetime uh, change and made it amazing. This Thank is you. beautiful. Thank you. Now, what part of the country are you trying to represent on this? This is uh, the Evanston sub from Green River, Wyoming to Ogden, Utah. And uh, the upper level represents the uh, Wyoming part of it from Green River uh, to uh, Evanston. And that's just basically a uh, pretty desolate area, with, uh, uh, but there's a Trona, uh, lots of uh, Trona mines. So we do have a Trona mine in the upper uh, level. Um, and then the lower level, once we get to Evanston and then go to the lower level, we're doing from uh, Evanston to Ogden, which is through the Echo Canyon, which is some beautiful scenery, which you kind of see behind us here. This is beautiful. And uh, some that I still have to do a lot of. And then the Weber River Canyon, which is also a, a beautiful uh, scenery, but it's different color rock and a completely different type of, of locale. Okay. Now you, I've noticed, haven't really chosen to use a lot of foam on this layout, have you? You're old school. Would you say, is this plaster? Um, it's... Uh, uh, that paper, rosin paper, and then uh, yeah, plaster over that, uh, cardboard web, and so forth. But I have, uh, did use uh, some foam uh, road bed from Hobby Innovations, which I don't think anybody has heard of. Uh, but they uh, were open for a little bit, and they have some really nice profile um, road bed that really fit the Class 1 uh, Union Pacific main line and uh, so there's a little bit of foam there but as far as the scenery goes no foam I did not build this to be uh, transported anywhere it's definitely for here in my basement it makes sense there's so many things I want to talk about the signals let's start with track what type of track did you decide to use now that you were starting all over in HO um, well I used microengineering uh, code 55 and N scale so I stayed with uh, code uh, 83 microengineering uh, for this layout, and then I've been using uh, fast tracks. I use fast tracks in N scale on the uh, uh, Geneva sub, um, and then uh, I am using fast tracks uh, for this layout also. And I might note that I sold all my fast tracks jigs and used that to buy my HO jigs and, and tools and so forth. And I actually sold all my fast tracks turnouts too, right. which helped you know, pay for everything. So it's important <clears throat> for the folks that don't know, but when he says fast tracks, that means that he's hand laid all of his turnouts, but yet the mainline trackage is microengineering. That's correct, that's correct. Now what height, now I see various heights on this. Right, this is definitely built for my height. Um, it's a little bit higher than I think what most people um, are, are used to. The lowest uh, is 45 inches, that's in the staging yard. And then um, it goes all the way up to uh, 60, uh, 68 inches, uh, which we have right here at, at West Vagel. Um, but I do have a platform there. Um, so for me, I can see everything. Uh, it's kind of cool, the high areas are at eye level and I can see the ground and everything, but um, if, if anybody's not quite as tall as me, they, you know, have a little bit more of a hard time. Um, but then there's uh, footstools around that they can use to, you know, to step up and, and take a look. Now, I don't even think minimum radius comes in on a layout like this <clears throat> with all the sweeping curvatures that you mm -hmm. do have. But what are the, the typical radiuses on this layout? Um, well, a lot of the curves uh, uh, are like 50, 60 inches. Um, what I liked about N scale was that you could have broad curves, long trains, and a high uh, scenery to track ratio. 
and that's why I stayed away from HO scale. Um, since we, you know, moved into our retirement home, uh, which is brand new, and we paid the extra to make sure we had a full basement, not a partial basement. Um, so we have 2,200 square feet, and I was like, you know, well, I have enough to do HO scale, but I wanted to make sure that it's not the typical HO scale where you have narrow aisles and tight curves and, you know, switching everywhere. I wanted it to be, you know, what I enjoyed about N scale, which is long trains, broad curves, um, and, a, you know, a lot of scenery to track um, ratio or a high scenery to track uh, ratio, which, you know, really uh, is what I, I really like about trains. Now tell me, um, I see, what do you use to operate? What system? Uh, Digitrax. Okay, and you've had good luck with that. Yeah, yeah I, I like it a lot. Um, uh, I'm pretty uh, good at using local net and everything, and I've uh, used it not only for you know, running the trains and so forth, but that also runs the uh, signals, that's the hardware for running the signals and driving the, the, the lights and everything. That's another thing, this layout is fully signaled. I mean, yes. just all around, we see the various lights changing <laughs> as with these trains. Yep. And I think you've got, what, like four or five trains running right now? Yeah, hopefully they're not derailing while we're talking. <laughs> <laughs> so that brings us to the next thing is, you appreciate or understand operation and you do that with this layout. Yeah, so this is not the, uh, you know, the typical, what's it called, uh, train and T and T O, I forget what that stands for, but you know that's what's you know into a lot of H O scale people are into you know that type of thing, and this is more of a, a double track mainline, you know, moving trains across the subdivision, and we still have a lot of meets and so forth because there is switching that takes place at different industries, so we still do have the switching, um, and then the dispatcher has to route the trains around the, the trains that are switching. We have uh, maintenance away, um, you know, uh, trains that uh, you know work at different areas, so the, the dispatcher has to work around that and so forth. We have uh, the excursion trains, which has to uh, stop at all the different places that have the photo opportunity, so we have to route the trains wow. around that. And so um, there is switching and a lot of that, you know, that that people enjoy. Um, but it, uh, to me, what I really like is having the trains moving and having meets and having one wait for the other train as it, you know, takes the crossover and, and uh, you know, and they kind of route trains around, you know, wh whatever's going on. So you've got the best of both worlds. You can have an operating session with your friends, yep. and yet you can just come down here and run trains while yep. you're working on scenery. Yes, I, I have a, um, a phone that I use that uses JMRI. And I can run f four trains at a time on the throttle, and then I have a, a panel on there also, so I can throw all the turnouts and you know, you know, uh, route the trains myself. And so I actually run an operating session by myself, mm -hmm. and I just run trains and then do the switching and so forth. It it takes me maybe two weeks to go through the full <laughs> day, you know, but it still, you know, gives me time to um, you know run trains and and have fun. This is absolutely amazing. Now you said that your backdrops, they're very beautiful. And your wife held the camera as you drove down the road and she shot yeah. them and then you seamlessly put right. them together. Tell yeah. us how you did that. Well, I have to say my wife is the best trained spouse anybody could ever have. Uh, she went all the way out to Wyoming and Utah with me. We drove across Iowa and Nebraska and uh, we spent a couple of days on the Evanston sub. and. Yeah, we drove along the highway and she took the cell phone and she took pictures as we went by. And then, so we had a string of maybe seven or eight pictures of a certain landscape. And then I, you know, uh, used photo editing software and, you know, uh, spliced them together. Uh, made sure I um, had everything scaled correctly so that it would, would look good. And then I went to Walgreens, which will print uh, a two by eight banner for $36. Okay. And if you wait for the 50% off sale, you can do, you know, a two by eight banner for like $18 and you get uh, two, you cut it in half. So you actually get um, 16 feet of, of uh, backdrop for uh, $18. This is absolutely amazing. Your scenery is beautiful. As we watch this train go by behind us right here, I would say that your consists are something that you pay close attention to. Oh, yeah. These trains all running, they all look relatively accurate for the era and the location. Yes. What was kind of cool is that I could start from scratch. I sold all my N-scale stuff, 
and then I bought everything over the period of the last, you know, 18 months. So I could make sure I bought everything that was for the period. I'm kind of shooting for about 2018. Okay. So I could, you know, have everything fit that era. And I've been, uh, they all have sound and, you know, uh, decoders and everything. And um, I speed match all of them. And we have DPUs and so forth. And uh, so, uh, and everything, it runs, runs real well. Uh, the, uh, the DPUs are powered and they do uh, uh, make a difference in uh, it. The trains go up to Helix better with DPUs than they do without because right. they lessen the, the the friction on the curve and lessen the the, the uh, stress on the couplers. Wow, this is absolutely amazing. The scenery is exquisite. The build out of the room, your white ceilings. There isn't anything mm -hmm. you missed. You're well on your way to creating an right. absolute work of art. <laughs> yes, um, I, I thank you for saying that. I, I really appreciate it. Um, I do have a, a YouTube channel that I, I update every week. It's, uh, it's you know, the UPRR Evanston sub, and there are st still plenty of people that can find fault in <laughs> how I'm doing different things. Uh, but for the most part, everybody's been been very uh, supportive, and it's it's been a lot of fun uh, sharing it on YouTube. It definitely motivates me. So you know, if the weekend's coming up. I gotta have something done, you right? Know, or I feel like I have to have something done, and so it kind of motivates me to, you know, to do something on, on, on the layout. Um, I've only been working on this layout for about just over two years. Wow! And so wow. I, I had all the bench work and all the track done in about a year and uh, about a year and a month, so um, 13, 14 months. I did all the bench. Well, actually. Finished out the basement, you know, uh, did all the bench work, all the track, and it had the golden spike after about, you know, 13, 14 months. Nice. And then things kind of slowed down because it was so much fun running trains. Um, once you had the whole loop done, then I could actually start running trains. So um, I'm not always working on a layout. I'm a lot of times playing with the layout. So wow. it definitely slows things down a bit. Daryl, I want to thank you so much for sharing this oh, with welcome. the viewers of What's Neat. There's a lot of sweat, a lot of tears, and a lot of beautiful work down here. Thank so you. thank you. Well, you're welcome. And that is this segment for What's Neat. I'm Kimball Rice, and on this segment of What's Neat, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about layout wiring. Now, I'm in the process of building a new layout, and wiring is not my favorite thing. In fact, I hate it the most, and maybe you do too. But I have found something to make it much easier, and I wanted to share that with you. So this is what I traditionally have been using on, on my other layouts. I have the main bus wire that, that runs the entire length of the layout and I come off of that with these track feed lines here and I go up to each side of the track. So what, you, what typically what you'll do is you'll strip these off and then you have these splices here. So what you have to do is you stick this in here and mind you this is all done typically under a layout, okay? And then you've got to come in and cramp that connector. All right. Once that's done, you need to kind of look in here and make sure that that is centered because I have seen them get off center and they won't work if they're off center. So they need to be centered and, and pretty much straight. So like that. All right, so let's say that this is, uh, and exactly that's what happens. Well, either you are gonna see a good show or I'm gonna have a bunch of bloopers at the end. All right, try it again. This goes in here. Cramp. All 
All right, now, make sure it's centered in there. If not, you'll need to take your screwdriver and kind of make sure it's centered in there, in there. Okay, that's good. All right, so this is the, the main feed line. And these are, I don't know, call them suitcase connectors or whatever. So what you want to do is you want to put those, put this right over, and you can kind of see there's a little notch, notch here. And uh, what you want to do is you want to put that over your wire and close it. Yeah, it can get right over it. <clears throat> and these have a lock, all right. Uh, you'll have to take a pair of pliers <clears throat> because this has got to go down in there real good, so. All right. All right, so that seems to be pretty good. All right, and then this end has an opening where this goes into there, all right, just like that. And it will lock in there. So the idea of this, uh, with that, it is to transfer the power to that suitcase clip and then out to your wire to, to your track. It's always a good idea to test these to make sure you, you've got a good connection and your power is good. Now, unfortunately, if you have you redo something or if you don't have a bad, if or if you have a bad connection here, either here or back here, you you basically have to start over. So you have to pull this apart, and it seeks pretty darn good. But my point is, you basically this is run. You run this clip. You run this. So you're down to having to do something different. So there it is. Uh, if this didn't catch good, then you kind of have to pry it off. It gets just, it, frankly, it just gets to be a pain. And I'm, I was looking for something different, and I found it. These are called Wago connectors. Uh, I don't know if anybody's heard of them. If you're an electrician, I'm sure you have. So what these are, and they're actually made for home uh, 120 power. So here's here's what they look like. They're these little connectors here, and they have. Get, if you want to do this, get the ones that, that have the flip up, and basically you flip. You can flip these up just like this. All right. So what I'm going to do is, this is my main track wire my bus wire all right coming in from the power supply I need to strip that strip that back there okay so that's stripped so I'm gonna take my Wago now these these Wagos you can I've seen them in singles like a splice uh, I've seen them in doubles this is a triple and I've seen them up to five uh, holes here where, where you can put things in now and it'll take several different sizes so what I do is I take where I, I want to put a, a connector in I'm gonna cut this main bus wire and I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna flip this down simple as that now let's say we're coming out and going on down the line so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it. I need a little more than that. All right, and I'm gonna stick it in right here next to it, okay? I'm gonna close that down, just like that, all right? Now what I'll do is I'll take my line that feeds my track feed line, and yes, this is smaller, and I'm gonna stick it in there and close it down. And that's all there is to it. Now, how strong is that? It's strong. Even this one. The small one. These things just don't come apart. They just don't. All right. So let's say that you want to change up your layout or you want to do, or you messed up something and you got a short and you, you say, oh, I need to redo it. All you have to do just clip these up and redo it. This connector is still good. You reuse it. You don't throw it away. And you can use, use them time after time after time. Now these have been tested in home use 
instead of wire nuts. And I've seen uh, several videos where they've really pumped the, the uh, power to it and they hold up pretty good. So I know there's no issue with, with layout wiring on these. And I'm currently building my new layout with these. Um, I'm gonna get some of the five because I can run several um, tracks off of, of one connector. But um, anyhow, so I wanna share, share these with you. You can buy these on Amazon, eBay, um, probably maybe even your local electro, electrical house, I'm sure has these. They're, they're fairly cheap. Uh, this is a box of 50, and it goes all the way from 24 to 12 uh, AWG wire, and it says to strip it back 11 millimeters. I, I don't ever really measure it. I know there's a there's a uh, scale on the side so that you can actually um, it, it actually shows you what, where where it is. But um, I I just I just strip it and put it in there. No fine, no problem. Just you just have to make sure that you get your wire all the way in, to the inside where you can see it. Uh, if you if you look, you can, you can since they're clear. I mean that's the great thing because you can see right in there. See because you can see where the wires come up and then just clamp that down and it makes contact right there with with this bar at that point. So great great little connectors. Um, I think I, this is a this is a box of 50. I think I paid a little maybe a little less than 20 bucks for them. Um, but yeah, just kind of wanted to share that with you. So that's what's neat. For this segment of What's Neat, I've got Larry Harrington from Bachman Industries in beautiful downtown Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Hey, Larry, how are you this January? Hey, Ken, and Happy New Year and all that good stuff. How are you? Absolutely. Thank you. I hope this is as good as a year as last year was for our industry. Yes, sir. And I've got, you've got a lot of neat stuff you want to talk about today, Larry. Oh, my Larry. God. And Christmas came, and we got all kinds of stuff in to show you. So uh, um, I'll start off with... Uh, one of our new HO locomotives. We got the uh, the BL2 here. Oh, they came out. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Well, these are the paint samples, so these aren't the actual production models yet. But okay. They turned out very nice. Um, if I'm turning it too fast, let me know. There's, there's the Western Maryland. That's the local favorite. Okay. Um, right down the street in the B&O Museum for me. And then this is the uh, Rock Island early scheme with the silver trucks. Nice. Very striking paint scheme as well. Now, these were the BL2s, uh, either kind of a love hate locomotive. Um, a lot of people like them a lot, a lot of people hate them a lot. Um, so, it's uh, but regardless, it's a very important historical locomotive. Um, this, this pretty much set the stage for the modern Jeep as we know it. Um, it was not a tremendous uh, um, success as far as the um, Mechanicals were difficult to get to. This was basically an F7 that was or an F3 modified hood, and it um, made it difficult to get to. But it did give the all-important rear view mirror, uh, yes. rear view from the cab, so that the, they could use them in switching operations. So um, this set the stage for the Jeep 7s, the Jeep 9s, and and um, further engines. But there was a, there was a good bit of. Uh, um, of these locomotives that were actually preserved, I think there's there's over uh, four of them. I think there's I think there's nine actually. But uh, this is the um, um, Chesapeake and Ohio paint scheme. There's a couple paint schemes in each one of the the Western Maryland had two paint schemes. I believe the CNO CNO had at least two, maybe three. Okay. And um, Rock Island had several as well. So um, there's they made 59 total units. But there's a lot of variety that's a, that will be available and, and, and to decorate if we choose to do so. So um, in the future, so this will be a DCC on board locomotive, um, and uh, you know, I can get better pictures to you through our our um, marketing department. But I'm um, just going to show that around. So um, also in HO, we have uh, last year we came out with um, coil cars and. This year we came, we made new hoods for them. We made the the, pre, the first ones were the later versions of the rounded hoods. Okay. And these are these are the angled hoods for the HO. So we have that available. And, and one thing that we do 
um, that some other manufacturers don't is we include the coil loads with our um, cars. So it's a complete complete set. You can use it, you know, prototypically to have a unloading operation um, on your layout um, that comes in B&O. Um, here's, I'll keep these in the package are a little easier to hold that way. The rock. Yes, nice. And then uh, another Midwest paint scheme we have here is Milwaukee Road. And finally, an East Coast uh, Redding, which is Kermit the Frog. Oh, That's nice. <laughs> so, yeah, they're, they're very, uh, a little bit of variety there. And with the first, first um, release, you can probably get a good number of them on your layout. So, That's um, very cool. So I'll switch over to the little older scale. Well, we, since we already had it in N scale, how about that? Did an N scale. There so uh, <laughs> this is this is uh, the N scale version with the rounded hoods, and this is the one with the angle hoods. We uh, skipped the second or We just did them all at the same time with the N scale. So, and again, they do have the loads inside of them. So um, this was our first test shot. We haven't had any painted samples yet, but we should see them in a couple months. Um, excited about that. That's a neat little car. Um, now we do have painted skin samples of a car we announced already, which is our chemical tank car. So here's uh, Diamond Chemicals. And we have uh, Engelhard. Nice. And Roller Chemicals. And then... Uh, Colorful uh, pen salt. And finally, we have Hooker. Oh, and, wow. Yes. And just like we did with the um, HO version, we made two different style domes, a small dome and a large dome, so that you, we can have multiple um, prototypes available for the, for the model. So, um, and finally... Um, in our N scale line, we have our painted samples of our SD40 2. We have three of the four, and we're still waiting for one of the other ones. So, this is the Norfolk and Southern, Norfolk Southern. And this is DCC with sound on board. Nice. And uh, this is the CSX model. And. Whose sound decoder is on those locomotives? This this is the soundtracks. Okay. Um, sound decoder, so Very good. Is, uh, and Union Pacific, and one I don't have, I was waiting for, is the um, Santa Fe model. So we should be getting that shortly. We'll pop that up on our... If you don't subscribe, you should go onto our Facebook page and go on to subscribe to that, and you'll get a lot of uh, information as it comes available. We have a new product, new model Monday we make, um, and we also make some... Announcements as as we go along, we share um, viewers uh, photographs of their layouts and, and models that they've used. Um, so it's a it's a neat way to keep in touch with everything at the um, at Bachman Trains. So. That's fantastic. That I'm telling you what, man, that internet sure has changed things from the way it was about 20 years ago. Oh yeah, for sure. So um, rock and roll, rock and roll. So Larry, um, all those freight cars you showed me have metal wheel sets. Is that correct? All the end skills and well, all of them do. Yeah, our, our uh, HO series, uh, Silver Series, has metal um, wheels, and then all of our end scale um, products have at metal wheels. That's very, and mark, very cool. Mark two couple knuckle couplers as well. So, is that what we've got for January? That's what we have for January. Yes. That's fantastic. I want to thank you and Bachman Industries for helping us promote the hobby through Model Railroad Hobbyist Magazine. Most of the freight cars that you've seen on this video, you can also see inside the magazine at Model Railroad Hobbyist Magazine, uh, whereas the What's Neat segment is also in print. A lot of people may not know that everything that we do in these videos every single month is also in print in that magazine. So with that, Larry, thank you so much once again. We're all ready to start the new year with the show circuit again. We'll be uh, heading out to Springfield shortly and um, and keep on going from there. So I hope to see see you all there at the show. Stop by our booth and say hi. Tell them you saw it on What's Neat. And that is this segment for January for What's Neat. All of the products seen on this episode of What's Neat are available from Lombard Hobbies in Lombard, Illinois, or order online at LombardHobby.com. 
and by Broadway Limited Imports, the cutting edge leader in model trains. Check out their website at broadway-limited.com. Bachman Trains, now that's the way to run a railroad. Check out their website at bachmantrains.com.